are two drugs that you can always rely on me to defend on this channel. One, of course, is weird diet caffeinated beverages, and the other is cannabis. Today, it's going to be the latter. Maybe tomorrow I'll address that Panera lemonade that keeps killing people. <laughs> I'm not, not sure yet. Scientists say the cannabis people are using for anxiety could be making it worse, says Fast Company. Heavy marijuana use may fuel anxiety disorders, new research finds. This age group is most at risk, teases Fortune Well. As a person who occasionally partakes of the devil's lettuce and who has anxiety, these headlines definitely caught my interest. So... I didn't bother reading them. <laughs> I instead just nipped on over to the Lancet to read the study that these pieces were based on because yay, the study is available in full. Development of an anxiety disorder following an emergency department visit due to cannabis use, a population-based cohort study. This study involves an impressive number of data points. They looked at about 35,000 people who visit an emergency room in Ontario to seek treatment after consuming cannabis. None of these people had ever been diagnosed with any anxiety disorder prior to that visit. But within three years of their ER visit, about 12% of them returned to the hospital for treatment for anxiety. That's about four times the number that you'd expect in the general population. And they found that adolescent boys were at the highest risk. So there you go. I answered that headline for you without you needing to click. Now, that is an interesting study with an interesting result, but you may notice that it does not, in fact, show that the cannabis people are using for anxiety could be making it worse or that heavy marijuana use may fuel anxiety disorders. Both of those are just made up. To start, of course, they were not looking at users who were using cannabis to treat anxiety. In fact, the people in the study did not have any anxiety diagnosis prior to their visit to the ER for using cannabis. For another thing, it did not study heavy users. In order to qualify for this study, all you had to do was not have an anxiety diagnosis and show up at the ER once for cannabis use. And that obviously does not suggest the patient is a frequent user. If anything, it suggests the opposite. Frequent cannabis users tend to understand that cannabis is wildly safe, especially when compared to other drugs we use frequently, like alcohol and Tylenol. It is extraordinarily difficult to die from a cannabis overdose. Uh, for instance, if you take too much cannabis, the treatment is to drink some water and, and just just wait a minute, just, just wait, <laughs> and then you'll be fine. So who tends to go to the hospital after consuming too much cannabis? First time users, users who aren't familiar with the feeling of being high and people who are very anxious. You just need to be really tightly wound and to not be in the presence of friends who will reassure you that you're fine and then give you a lemon seltzer. That's how you end up in the ER for cannabis use. For instance, a UC San Diego study published last year looked at the increasing number of elderly people who ended up in the hospital after cannabis was decriminalized in California. The lead author told reporters that as a doctor who works with the elderly, he's seen many people who picked up edibles to help them sleep, but didn't really know how they work. I see patients later and they said, I used a gummy and nothing happened and they don't know much about the doses. So then they say, I took a lot more and and then two hours later, my heart is racing. I'm so anxious. I don't know what's going on. And they end up in the emergency department. I've combed through every study that I could find on why exactly the majority of people end up in the ER after using cannabis. And it seems to be either accidental ingestion, usually kids under 10, first time users who got freaked out like that lead author describes, and people who are actually on other drugs as well, like this study that found that nearly 50% of trauma patients in the hospital who tested positive for cannabis also tested positive for amphetamines, cocaine, opioids, or fencyclidine. Worth noting, that study, I had to read in full because it had a really scary finding that those trauma patients who came in high were more likely to be placed on a ventilator. But it turns out there was no change in mortality or ICU length, and yeah, half of them were on much harder drugs as well, so it was a bit less scary than I originally thought. 
So no, anyway, this new study just doesn't tell us anything about the actual relationship between cannabis and anxiety. Like pretty much every other observational study like this, they can't show causation in that people with anxiety might be more likely to try cannabis to treat it. And in this case, they have even less convincing data than self-reports because they can't even say that these ER visits were due to heavy or frequent use of cannabis. I'd like to know a few more interesting causes for concern that are related to all of this. First of all, there is a suspected link between cannabis use and schizophrenia and other types of psychosis. I know I'm not alone here in that many people who have accidentally eaten too much of that happy brownie or took too big of a hit off that bong have experienced what's known as cannabis-induced psychosis. Sometimes when you take too much, things get really trippy in a bad way and sometimes you feel like you might die. I think I've mentioned before on this channel my experience, but what happened with me was I became unstuck in time like Billy Pilgrim, and I thought that I could flip through time like a book, but then I got scared that I might get restuck in a particular moment and then never get back to the present. And my boyfriend at the time tried to help me by putting on a comforting TV show. I believe it was Parks and Rec. And that actually scared me even more because I couldn't tell if I had already seen the episode I was watching or if I was just remembering seeing it in the future. It's kind of funny now, but I was really freaked out at the time. But I didn't go to the ER because even in my temporarily psychotic state, I knew I wasn't actually dying and my boyfriend knew it too. According to a study from 2022, on a quarter of a million regular cannabis users, only about a half of 1% reported going to the ER for a cannabis-related psychotic episode. But I'm pretty sure that a lot more people have had that type of experience but they just didn't go to the hospital, or it wasn't quite that bad. Uh, because of the ability of cannabis to cause these kinds of psychotic experiences, it's certainly fair to wonder if cannabis might actually trigger a serious psychosis in some people. There have been a lot of studies on this, most of which have the same problem with causation as the anxiety studies. Maybe cannabis leads to an increase in schizophrenia risk, or maybe cannabis use is just one of the many behaviors that researchers believe are warning signs of a future schizophrenia diagnosis, going along with things like alcohol use, tobacco use, or poor performance in school. That said, last year, researchers published a massive study on Danish cannabis users, and it isn't a slam dunk for causation, but it does make a really good case. Among 7 million people, those with cannabis use disorder, which is, you know, a kind of addiction in which people continue to use cannabis despite the drug negatively impacting their life, had an increased risk of schizophrenia especially among men. They also found that as cannabis increased in both availability and potency from 1972 to 2021, the number of schizophrenia diagnoses rose in exactly the way we would expect to see if there was a causal link with a particularly strong correlation for young men. Again, not proof of causality, just evidence for it. And compelling enough evidence for some researchers to caution younger people from frequent or heavy use of cannabis when they're still in that age range when these disorders uh, emerge and are identified, usually before the age of 25. That's right, rental car companies didn't just randomly choose 25 as their minimum age to give you a car. They chose that to reduce your risk of developing a psychotic episode while you drove home from the airport. Anyway, any connection between cannabis and schizophrenia, even if it's causal, would still represent a very small risk, very rare occurrence. Which brings me to the other related subject I feel I should bring up, even with an increase following various states decriminalizing and legalizing cannabis, the number of people showing up at an emergency room for cannabis 
pales in comparison to other drugs. Cannabis doesn't even get a shout out in this pamphlet showing ER visits by drug type during COVID in California. The worst offender was opioids, driven in large part by fentanyl. And even then, those numbers can't compare to ER visits that happen due to alcohol, an order of magnitude larger, 400,000 visits in just 2017, compared to literally every other drug, which was about 5,000 per month, which would be 60,000 for the year. So if you're gonna worry about a drug screwing up your own health or the health of kids, booze is the one to go after. And that includes for anxiety, the correlation that kicked off this video. Research shows that people with anxiety are at increased risk of alcohol use disorder, likely because alcohol can calm anxiety in the moment that you're drinking it. But unfortunately, the next day, that anxious person's brain can experience a corresponding spike in even more anxiety thanks to alcohol screwing with neurotransmitters and also interfering with sleep patterns. How do you make the anxiety go away again that next day? day? That's right, more alcohol. Wash, rinse, repeat. It's much, much more dangerous than any suspected connection between anxiety and cannabis. That said, if you're under 25, male with a family history of schizophrenia, maybe don't get into cannabis as a hobby. And if you have severe anxiety and you want to experiment with cannabis for treating it, Start small. Uh, cannabis affects people in different ways. For me, it just deletes the anxiety, but I know several people who feel like any amount of THC makes them very paranoid and more anxious in general. Just, you know, please take it in a safe space. And if you don't have a friend to babysit you, uh, go ahead and queue up this great video from Lifehacker. I'll include a link below because it always makes me laugh, even when I'm not high sometimes. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you loved the video, please subscribe. And if you think the world could use more videos like this and you happen to have a few bucks laying around, head to patreon.com slash Rebecca and join an awesome community of nerds like the people whose names you see on the screen right now. Thanks.